welcome back to the Global Village. I've been speaking to some incredible humans this morning and this one is no, no exception to that. Her name is Kate Nelson and she is an ocean conservationist. She really inspires me with her project that encourages people to reduce their plastic use and she goes around to all of the different cafes in the area and really just just tries to ban the, the plastic coffee cups by showing people another alternative. And I think it's so important in this, in this day and age. And the little things are the big things when it comes to this conservation. So I really have a lot of respect for you. And thank you. Mm. Thanks for showing up. We've been meaning to do this for a while, haven't we? We have. Now it's happening. Awesome. Thanks, Chloe. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk to you about was just what inspired you to just become really passionate about ocean conservation? Mm. Um, I think like most people, um, you know, the ocean is my playground, it's my meditation spot. Um, I surf, I sail, I free dive. So just having a connection with the ocean, um, just like any bit of nature, any, any mountain, any um, hills, any trees, um, feeling deep connection with the ocean um, and always just continuously inspired by the animals um, that I meet, that I, that I witness, observe and enjoy in the ocean. Um, <clears throat> so feeling that deep inspiration and, and just connection with the ocean and then um, through my work in conservation learning that our use of plastic is actually ending up in the ocean and that plastic does not biodegrade um, you know, and we use it for almost everything. It's so pervasive, um, especially disposable plastic. So learning that plastic, we use it constantly. It doesn't break down and it's ending up in our oceans, choking turtles and starving whales. Um, it, just, it just seemed obvious to me. I was so ready to just give up all plastic. Um, yeah, it was, I, it was easy for me. I mean, it was, it was difficult actually figuring out ways around plastic. Um, but the actual decision to give it up was very easy because I knew that if I was going to try and inspire other people to give up plastic that I had to just be fully extreme and not use any and that might inspire other people to meet me halfway or right. anywhere near on that path. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. So how would you encourage people if they want to reduce their plastic? What are the big ones to kind of just kick straight away? Yeah, you know, it's... it's um, baby steps because it is everywhere yeah so um, we always say like uh, avoid the you know the big four so plastic water bottles just try to bring your own bottle you can do that most places I think Splendor actually has a rule against bringing your own water bottle because if you fill it up it could be used as a weapon yeah so what? there's all yeah <laughs> you just hit someone with it so they make you buy the plastic ones yeah oh so there's constantly things like this that we're, we're trying you know you have to be creative to get around so um, <clears throat> the biggest tip is be creative. Um, you know, think outside of the box or the bottle. You know, bring bring your own when you can. But if you if you can't bring your own, then you know, bring your own cup. You know, that can't be used as a weapon. And then you could refill it at all the um, you know. There's plenty of water refill stations on the ground. So um, yeah, it's, it's being creative, trying to plan ahead. So um, bringing your own shopping bag. Um, again, if you forget, be creative. So, you know, all the food got shipped to the store in boxes. So just find a box that they have lying around the store. Um, also for like the produce bags, use a mushroom bag. There's always a mushroom section with a paper bag. So um, that's a good way around the plastic bags. And yeah, so bottles, plastic bags, coffee cups, like you said. Mm -hmm. So um, bring your own coffee cup. But if you forget, at least skip the plastic lid on the coffee cup, go topless. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's a fun way to remember it. Just take your coffee topless. Um, Good. Yeah, and then let's see. The last one would be straws. Mm -hmm. Trying to avoid straws. So um, I remember growing up, my uh, family used to say like, "Don't smoke cigarettes because you'll get wrinkles around your lips." So I imagine the same thing would apply to drinking from a straw, right? So you might get wrinkles if you use straws. So just trying <laughs> to avoid those. Um, so yeah, just trying to come up with like clever little ways t to remember. Um, you know, and, and getting to whoever you're ordering from, make sure they understand fully. So like, oh, no straw, 
sometimes they hear straw and put two in. Right. They're like, oh, I didn't hear. So it's just, you know, oh, the reason why I don't use a straw is because plastic never biodegrades and it ends up in turtles' nostrils. You know, it's like making that connection for them. Yeah. Yeah. So plastic bottles, plastic bags, um, coffee cups and straws are the main ones to just kind of start avoiding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's really valuable information and I think more and more people are becoming more conscious of it as mm. there are other options available out there for us and we are learning more but yeah mm. it's still just a day by day moment by moment decision to totally choose a different way choose a different mm. product choose mm -hmm. yeah well that's really it it's, bit. we're so caught up in the convenience of consumption like what's just like given to us how everything's provided to us so if we kind of step back a little bit and become more intentional about our consumption and um, you know say I actually don't like eating out of plastic like there is evidence that plastic leaches into the things which it contains mm -hmm. so if you're interested in your health you'd want to avoid it anyways yeah um, and there's so many more beautiful things to eat out of like your coconut bowls mm -hmm. for example yeah. So like the gratitude bowls you know you can eat out of something so beautiful that has like a beautiful intention that is gonna make your food taste so much better and, and be so much better for you you yeah. know it's like bringing like a little bit more like romance into just daily life yeah mm. totally totally yeah and so you just got back from Fiji yeah and a, big, a big focus topic of your retreat was also plastic plastic yeah. and ocean conservation yeah so we did a, a bit it was amazing we did a conservation mermaid retreat which was really Epic. fun <laughs> yeah. I need to be the next one you have to come <laughs> it was so fun so we, we were on a catamaran and we sailed through all the islands and um, did beach cleans and we were working with Greenpeace. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a really strong advocate, her name's Matisse and she's the head of Greenpeace Pacific. Um, and so our, our mission was to determine what an issue that's affecting these beautiful islands, Fiji, um, that we could bring kind of our tourist power to. Mm -hmm. You know, they get so much tourist money coming in um, and it goes to the hotels, it goes to the resorts, it doesn't really trickle down to the villages and the people that are living amongst this trash that's being built up from, you know, packaged chips or yeah. water bottles, all this stuff. So, um, but we figured out through our research that China is importing um, all of these things to Fiji and then the ships, the container ships are leaving empty. Um, and like America and Australia, we ship so much of our recycling to, to China. Um, so our idea is to fill the ships with plastic bottles from the hotels and the resorts. Mm -hmm. So that was the focus of our campaign um, in Fiji as we were sailing around getting imagery of um, us, the mermaids, with plastic bottles, kind of like ruining our experience of Fiji right. um, that we will then publish to um, or pitch to the hotels and the resorts to get on board and say, you know, you're either with us or you're not. Let's start recycling on Fiji because it's it's shocking. There's there's no recycling. It all goes to landfill yeah. or gets burned. Mm -hmm. It's like burning plastic. It causes so many like lung diseases. The tuberculosis has made a comeback in the Pacific. So, mm. Mm. yeah. So that was our focus. And the local people don't really, <laughs> as I experienced, like in Bali and Thailand and yeah. places like that too. They don't really have the frame of reference to know really the, the damaging effects mm. of burning plastic and it's just yeah they use it like kerosene to light fire and mm. yeah yeah so it's a huge one thank mm. you so much for <laughs> stepping up and mm. yeah doing your part we all have something that really really ignites us mm -hmm. and our passion and our purpose and we just need to continue mm. on that yeah yeah it's an honor to know Mm -hmm. It's an honor to, to see the path and to know the passion. So it's, it's you know, I have to walk it. It's, it's, an, it's an honor. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Well, I encourage everyone out there to tune in to what this beautiful woman is doing. Your Plastic Free Mermaid on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tune in to her next retreat that she's going to be holding. When will that be? Um, yeah, I've got one yeah, in two weeks in Exmouth. So that one's, oh, wow. yeah, we're going to be over there with whale sharks, hopefully. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then um, doing Great Barrier Reef, probably like Harvey Bay in October with, at the end of whale season. So. All right. I'll have to get, get yeah, on there. <laughs> that would be awesome. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, beautiful. Yeah, thanks, Chloe. Mm. So nice.